Hello, this is Joe and welcome back to the channel. In tonight's video, we're going to continue on with this series about taking images that are lesser known or that you don't really see that often on the internet. And for tonight's image, I chose NGC 2170. It really isn't done very often and it doesn't really have a name, so maybe that's why it's not very popular, but it's a beautiful, beautiful uh, reflection nebula in the constellation Monoceros. And I think that I could do it justice with my current setup here. Uh, I struggled with the notion of using the Edge HD over the Z81 because I really wanted to get a close up. And to me, what it looks like is fireworks in outer space. And, you know, what's better than fireworks except that they're in outer space? Uh, so I decided to go with the Z81 and do a wider field of it. And then if there's not a lot going on around uh, the nebula itself, then I'll just crop it in. Uh, I'll be in bin one mode because it works really well with this telescope and that'll give me uh, lots of resolution that I'll be able to crop in if need be. Uh, I plan on doing some uh, three minute exposures in uh, RGB. I can't really get a magnitude on this, so I'm not sure how bright it is, but it looks like you have to do some decent exposure uh, to get the nebula to come through the stars and the colors correctly. So we'll find out. There's almost no moon. And um, if I continue to shoot it over the course of more than a night, there will be no moon. Uh, it's a complete new moon. And hopefully I'll have three or four nights of clear skies to, to get all the integration time that I need. So those of you who just found me or you haven't been following me, uh, I'll be using the uh, William Optic Z81 with uh, William Optic, Optics Guide Scope and a 120mm mini from ZWO. I've got the ZWO electronic uh, autofocuser. I'll be using a field flattener on this to make sure that the field is flat and even and I don't have any kind of elongated stars in the corners, although I have a feeling that I'll probably be cropping this a little bit because of the fact that um, it's going to be a lot wider than the target or my field of view will be a lot wider than the target's going to end up being. Uh, I've got the ZWO filter wheel with a 294mm Pro and I'm using Astrodon and Chroma filters. I'm actually, for tonight, I'll just be using the Astrodon um, G2 uh, color filters. I don't know if you noticed, but I actually used the counterweights on the Z81 that I was using on the Edge HD. Um, and I think that because when I upgraded to the Edge HD, I had the original saddle that came with, with the EQ6R. And since then I had upgraded it to this ADM saddle. And the ADM saddle's much, much nicer. Uh, everything feels much more solid and I don't, um, it's nice and flat and then I don't have that um, weird uh, feeling where one side was was taller than the other when you were trying to um, get it to close in and I, I really don't feel bad with this being just about anywhere the problem is is that um, it hits the focuser the focus wheel if I go any further up so for whatever reason with this I guess just because it's longer um, I'm not able to get the telescope up as high as I want to. So I also had the, I'm glad I got the counterweights. I originally got them for the Edge HD8, but uh, they're coming in handy with the, the Z81 now as well. I think I'll be imaging tonight, but look at that sunset. It's a beautiful sunset. I guess if uh, I can't image, 
because of the clouds, they can probably enjoy the clouds. So the plan was, was to take 182nd sub-exposures. And I say was because I didn't end up doing that. Um, let me show you one of the subs or the stacks of uh, blue. And what happened was it, it came out really beautiful. Um, I think for, uh, this is just the, the blue channel, but I, this is not 180 seconds. Now this ended up being 10 minute long sub exposures um, to, to pull out this type of detail in this particular nebula. Now I had never done this before and there's not a whole lot of it out there. So I was a little nervous to go all the way up to 10 minutes on LRGB because normally I only do 180 seconds max um, in, in RGB and usually 120 on luminance um, because most of the RGB targets that I'm taking are pretty bright. And it just turned out for this particular object that it, it needed a lot more. And it kind of saddens me a little bit because where I live and you know if, if you can get down to Bortle 4 or lower skies I don't think you'll have too much of an issue taking 10 minute long subs um, however in a heavily light polluted area using a broadband like that I'm not sure how that's going to come out on a 10 minute long sub um, and I was really hoping that other people would, would try and take this target but it might prove to be a very difficult target to get um, for my light polluted friends and viewers out there. Um, the second issue and and probably the biggest issue for me on this image were the the satellite lane that this happens to be in. Uh, I've never really seen this many satellites uh, <laughs> before uh, while imaging. I, I normally just use um, APP or, or Pix and Sight and they, they just have these wonderful algorithms to get rid of the satellite trails unless it's a really bad plane trail or something um, I usually use all my subs and in this case I never really had any subs without satellites in them and the culmination of them all ended up looking like this now this was done in APP and I know uh, the reason that I use APP is because Pixinsight is very aggressive uh, when it comes to uh, removing the the data from an image. So I went ahead and I did it in Pixinsight as well. And this is the Luminance channel uh, on the Pixinsight stack. And it, it looks a lot better, you would think. Um, you could still see the satellite trails going through the whole image. and But I didn't think it was that bad. I could live with that. And then I went ahead and I removed the stars from this image and um, tried to bring out some more of that luminosity and I ended up with this which is actually now pretty bad and um, pretty much unusable. Um, I spent a lot of time trying to clean this up and I, I still wasn't successful. So what I ended up doing was cropping, um, cropping a lot of this out from maybe here on um, in my final image uh, just because I, I was able to get rid of some of these and some of these going this way but but this was just the killer down here at the bottom and here's some of the subs that I was taking and just to show you um, this is just one single green sub and you know these were the satellites that came through on that one sub but then the next time there'd be more and the next time there'd be others um, he, and then I just arbitrarily grabbed these um, here's one of my luminant subs um, you can see the this is inverted the other direction but you could see how many um, trails had come through or maybe that was a stack no it was a sub um, and then this is the green stack from Pixinsight and even the, even in Pixinsight that green stack was just you could still make out the the satellite trails so all in all I was really disappointed because of the satellite trails but then when you look at the actual image itself you could tell how beautiful this is going to be um, when I add up everything and then I put that luminance layer over the colors 
So this project was not without its challenges. On the first night, we had this crazy windstorm come through with gusts up to 30, 35 miles an hour. So I was unable to really image that night. I did get a few subs uh, when, in between the giant gusts, but eventually I just had to close up the observatory. It was just too windy. Uh, for those of you wondering about my roof and stuff, they've asked me questions in the past. Yeah, it holds up just fine in the high winds and I don't really have anything that, that ties it down. It's just when it's closed, there's really nothing to lift up on the roof and the roof's pretty heavy. Uh, it's shingled and it's a full roof. Uh, the third night, or maybe it was the second night now, I can't remember anymore because it's been about a week since I started this. Um, the, it said it was going to be clear and then the clouds came through, but it was a beautiful sunset. But overall, I hope you guys enjoy this image. I didn't get as much time on it as I would have liked to. I think it did, did need more time, but overall, I, it came out pretty good. If you like this kind of content, Please give me a like and we'll see you in the next video.